Hello, my name is Bill Stanbrook. And I'm just making this video to demonstrate the Jigsaw Factory Jigsaw Puzzle Generation software that I'm selling. This is what I'm actually selling here, which is a zip file with the software in it. So, basically you get the zip file, download it, and then you can double click to open it, copy and paste the folder inside, wherever you want it to go and you've got the product here double click that to open it you've got various files here the executable file which is uh, double click to run the program instructions file here which is displayed inside the program and a readme text file which just gives you basic instructions very basic. Alright, so we'll start the program. Now you probably get one of those dialogues. So now we've started the program. We start off in the instructions page, the embedded instructions page. And you can scroll through this and uh, let's read the instructions. You acquaint yourself with the program. You can also check for program updates. No update available at the moment. Open updates folder where any updates will get placed in. If you license and legal information. There. And you can visit the website with the software and visit the support forum. Which is uh, basically just a subreddit on reddit.com. So this is the management puzzle management tab page for the program. Create a new puzzle project, open an existing puzzle project, one you've already created. Open the previous one you worked on, close the currently open one or delete it. And open the mind program folder here. So we'll just create a new puzzle project. We'll call it Pack, yeah. jigsaw pack. Package. All right. So we'll create a new project called jigsaw package. We can rename it here, and you can set the title bar text for the software here. Let's open that up. Enter in here, enter it in there. Oops, that we misspelled. Enter in there. Somewhere there. Okay. If you leave this blank, it'll just use the uh, pack project name here. So once we've created a project it'll be just an empty project. So we need to add some source images to it. You can either paste them from the clipboard, copy them into the clipboard, the files and then just paste them here, press that button. Or you can open a file requested to add them. Or you can drag and drop them into this rectangle here. This is just a bit of info about uh, selecting files in Windows. This software is for Windows PC. It's not available for Mac or Linux. And these little help buttons here, you can see all throughout the program. They just give you contextual information about the nearby elements. Let's tell you what buttons and uh, various other components of the program do. So if you uh, need info about something, you just click these buttons and I'll tell you what you need to know. Or you can just read the instructions. It's the same info usually. So we need to add source images. We'll add these ones here. Just drag and drop. We'll add them there. Basically, it, uh, the program takes a variety of different file types. 
most uh, standard pull-ups, JPEG, PNG, TGA, Targa, uh, TIFFs, BMPs, uh, it's got it listed somewhere. It's source images. Uh, should have it listed. Anyway, I'm sure I put it in here somewhere. Oh, there, there. Right here. BMP, JPEG. So I think there's JPEG 2000. TIFFs, TGA, Targa, PNG, JPEG, JPEG. There's the different file types. Once you've added them, they'll appear here on the Sort Puzzle Images page, which lets you sort the images into whatever order you want them in. Just click the image to select it. Click the Sort button, tall grey sort button, to uh, move it to where you need it to be. So move it up here for example and you've got these little squares here you can create image description files for each uh, puzzle, puzzle image in which case once a uh, image description file is made this will show a tick mark if the file is open it will show an asterisk so we can remove the puzzle selected image from the puzzle project it shows the temporary image name which is used as the file name for the temporary image file while it's being processed uh, various other bits of information move previous puzzle, next puzzle next image previous image with description, next image with description none of them have got description so it doesn't do anything and this checkbox will open the description file for the selected image if one's available. When you select an image, we'll open it here. That's pretty much it for this section. So I'm not sure I mentioned, but if you try to add uh, images that are already been added to the project, they'll just get ignored so you don't end up with redundant images, multiple uh, copies of the same image in the project. So we create an image description. We'll select the first one here, which is already selected. Create the image description. That'll just create a blank description file. Now we can add a page heading to it. That'll appear at the top of the page. Uh, top of the page in large bolded text. It'll be contained in a H1 HTML tag. You can put HTML in here too. The image is left aligned by default, so if you want it centered, just put the center tags in there. So, create the description file. You can open a description file for the selected image. Close description file for open image of the currently selected image and delete description file for the open image and this opens the descriptions folder where all the images are where the description piles are placed in they've got these des, ex des file extensions you'll see that if your uh, system is set to display the file extension so in this folder is also where you put any uh, images you want to include in the uh, description files or the more info files. Here you can switch between the work area where you edit the image, uh, edit the description, image description, preview area which shows the HTML rendered version. It's nothing there to show at the moment. This lets you edit the default colors for the um, that appear in the file, in the HTML file. You can default edit them basic f uh, files, colors that the entire program uses. Edit the ones for a particular project, or edit the ones for a particular description file. This button here will save the currently open description file if it needs saving. Saving is conditional. 
Saving happens automatically under most circumstances, but only if an actual change has occurred. And then it will create copies of the current description file to use for each puzzle image that doesn't already have a description file. So it lets you create a template for all the files, uh, the images that don't already have a description file. And you can then edit that template however you want it. So what we want to do is set some text there. Look at this. It uh, gives us the page heading, the page title basically. It appears at the top of the page. It gives us a subheading that will appear. This will be wrapped have uh, h2 HTML tags wrapped around it and appear above this paragraph here and we'll use this for the paragraph text paragraph contents and we can just post it in there and when you use the uh, right click menu here you've got a variety of editing options fairly standard text editing options undo redo you can strip rich text too if you copy and paste from a rich text source like another web page or something the rich text can get posted into here so if you select that I think you can just strip it out so that's set up now we can show the HTML rendered version and that is just this is what will be displayed in the uh, image info tab in the puzzle client that this program generates for the image when it's uh, being used as a puzzle so that's pretty much that tab explained now this one lets you create more info files these are uh, the image descriptions, as I said, show up when you've got a uh, particular puzzle image being used as a jigsaw puzzle in the puzzle client. Uh, the image info tab will uh, show this here, whatever you create as a description file for it. This one is a more general, it shows in the more info tab page to the puzzle client so you can use this for broader information you can use it to describe the entire set of images you're using for the puzzle set of jigsaw puzzles you can use it for information about uh, your business or whatever your family holiday if that's what the images are about or your, your kids your family whatever you want basically we'll sh uh, display it, show that uh, a bit when I show the uh, puzzle client. So you can create these files. This will get created with the name of the file ID. The file ID is used as a temporary file name. You can just rename it to whatever you want it to be. Press right click options here, let you move it around, clone the page, copy page, title text, and file ID text, and so on. You can also copy and paste these um, files. So if you want to copy one as a template and then paste it back in or whatever, copy one to use as a template for general projects, jigsaw puzzle projects, and paste it back in to use in a particular project. So we'll check and uncheck the checkbox. Some functions work from the selected puzzle to the checkbox, checkbox or whatever. And this here is for bulk options, bulk actions. So you can open selected page, delete selected page. A lot of the same options as you have for the right click menu, but they're more designed for uh, working with bulk options. So create an info page, create an info, 
Per purge, blur check purge, close info purge, well will be served, lead info purge. And this shows the HTML text, HTML purge that uh, gets rendered. We don't have any data there yet, so just copy and paste this in there. This will use the purge title or you can enter it directly as the purge heading. This here will put the uh, HTML paragraph tags around the entire paragraph here since we've already got those in the text there, we'll just uncheck that. You can create more paragraphs or remove paragraphs. And you can also do the same as before, use current pages template. All the check pages. So basically if you create a heap of blank pages here, you can use the current page as a template. Uh, do I write any checked pages? And just select that, check a heap of files here, and then use this button to overwrite these files, check files with uh, this file to use it as a template. And you get the same color editing options here, which should at the default colors. There's a little more information in this pop up and in the uh, instructions. So. That's pretty much set up and it gets rendered here. Now, these links that appear in these files will uh, open when you click on them. They'll open in your default web browser. Which can be handy if you're using this as uh, something to advertise a business, creating jigsaw puzzles to advertise your business or whatever. This can be set to take the whoever clicks it to your main website. Here I've got an image that is actually meant to appear there but I haven't put the image file in there so what we do here is go grab the image file which is not there, it's here. This one let's put it in there now it appears. So that's pretty much the more info. Now we can create a jigsaw puzzle, create jigsaw puzzles with this tab, tab number six. We can create one here, puzzle package that uh, just appears as a folder files in a folder basically. This button lets you create a zip puzzle package so the package is zipped up rather than disappearing as files and folders. This lets you open the output folder to view the created puzzle packages. This will delete the contents of the output folder so if you've got a heap of projects or output test projects, test packages in there you can just delete them all with that button. So currently it's empty, we haven't created a project, so let's create one. Let's create the project, no errors. Now we've got the project appearing here, we can also create a zip file version of the project. Let's create the zip package, which is the same as the other one, it's just been zipped up. And this is what we've created. Let's see how all the image was we added to the package. That's where the puzzle will appear. Settings that you configure it. You can uh, create settings profiles to save different configurations of settings. You can change various fa uh, settings here. 
So you make the puzzles more complex. This is where the image info will appear when you've got a current puzzle. And this is the more info, your more info pages will be appear here. You can just click on them to select them. The first one will be loaded automatically. Let's see, you can also link images of course. Just wrap a link tag around the image tag. You need to know a bit of HTML to use this, but uh, where are we? We've got right click op options here with uh, both the image descriptions and more info pages. You can select a bit of text and it will uh, wrap paragraph tags around it, bold tags, italic tags, underlines, center tags, link tags, it'll wrap it around the uh, link text you want to use as anchor text and you just fill in the web address basically and you got image tags so, so that is a per project created and I'll just run a puzzle that'll generate it and you can just complete it Uh, if I can find the pieces. Just snap them together, drag it around, or click and drag and drop. You can have multiple pieces snapped together. You can either drag and drop the piece onto the oops, the collection of pieces, I drag and drop the collection of pieces under the piece and you get more complex options force fields with a little opening on them you've got to navigate into you can have dynamic puzzle piece rotation, manual puzzle piece rotation it's rotated at a random angle and you just have to rotate it with a mouse wheel to line it up, randomly flip Puzzle piece connector plug. Uh, it's basically it just changes the appearance of the puzzle pieces to make them more or less uh, random. And you can show a completed puzzle image in the background, which just shows a reference image. Or to delete save file co for completed puzzles. Once you finish a puzzle, you can set this to automatically delete a save file you got a save file for it, so if you're having to do it manually. And you can set a timer to limit time allowed to save puzzle and figure it here. So we'll set that to the maximum. Create another one and it creates this basically, which will be very difficult to solve and you've set a time limit there too, which includes I didn't set force field detection penalty. So now there's a force field detection penalty. There's a period of grace with this. When it's green, it's in the grace period. And you can also have dynamic puzzle piece aversion. So the pieces will run away from the mouse pointer. Makes it a bit easier to navigate the mouse around there. Just for this force field, got to work your way between this little gap here. So if you don't, it detects you, detects the mouse pointer, you can't click on the piece. And every time you go over a piece here, it'll penalise you on the timer if you've got the timer set. So that's the puzzle client, a puzzle generator rather, which generates this client. And I'll do a description of the puzzle client itself in another video. Thanks for listening.